Viewer discretion is advised. I'm going to be talking about my childhood, which is very traumatic, real quick, in my favorite band, though, uh, so I can you know, do a bunch of videos. It's not that cold out. This will actually make me be able to save uh, money on gas when I'm running my car. If you're new here, I am homeless. I do live in my car. Right now, I'm in my band. It will right, not my band, though, but I, in a band, though. But uh, viewer discretion is advised. I'm going to be talking about my childhood. Um, I'm comfortable enough to talk about it because um, I want people to know my story. I want people to, to understand things, and maybe this will, I, you know, I think this will end up helping me as well. At least, uh, you know, in part, if it doesn't, maybe it uh, helps somebody else. Well, more important than helping me, I'd rather it help somebody else. You know, that's just how I am. But so my childhood was extremely traumatic. It was extremely brutal. Um, I'm gonna jump right into it. Uh, uh, my mom's husband, who's my biological father, I don't call him dad, I don't call him father, was was, was the worst kind of person. He would uh, beat up my mom, beat up on anybody who lived in the house, so that's me and anybody related to me inside that house. He would just didn't just beat you up, like, you know, it wasn't like, you know, hard spanking or a smack on the mouth. No, this is uh, uh, head to toe uh, bruises. Somebody related to me, um, uh, like inside the house, it was a brother, um, knocked out his teeth. He did certain things to certain people inside that house. Me in particular, um, he always uh, liked to use my genitals as, uh, as an ashtray and, and punch me there. Um, I have little to no feeling in that area now, and it's, you know, probably why I'm, uh, you know, 40 years old and no single, you know, single, no kids, it, 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 does, it don't work. It's never worked after kind of abuse. It's cost me two relationships that I've been uh, ghosted on. Um, uh, you know, get close to somebody for a long time, well, a decent amount of time, and, you know, things, you know, can get hot and heavy. I've, I, I thought I was in love twice and told, uh, you know, told a woman, you know, you know, what happened and stuff like that. And they just never talked to me ever again. Act like it was all cool, and I'm not going to chase anybody, but, you know, I guess that kind of stuff shows what kind of person somebody can be. It, it's whatever. I, I don't dwell on it. But nonetheless, um, uh, my mom would, would get beat, tools thrown at her face and her head. Um, same thing that would happen to me. Um, everybody, you know, I grew up in a very bad area. And this very bad area, that stuff everybody's parents did. I thought it was normal. I thought that's what certain Peter parents did. I thought that when people had bad habits, um, and hopefully you guys can understand what I'm talking about, bad habits, you know, things that you put in your arm and things that, you know, you use and you don't go to sleep for weeks at a time. And then, of course, people overindulging in booze, which, you know, that's exactly what everybody did in that area, uh, the parents did. All that stuff uh, I never never got into, never liked, and it was because I saw what it, uh, what it did to other people. And I'm just not into it, you know. So nonetheless, um, he was uh, he was on, on, on all that kind of crap. And um, uh, this area, everybody's parents did that. It was, you know, I back then it was it felt like such a small world, you know. And there was gang activity outside constantly. And I just like to play, you know, play sports, you know. So I'd always be outside trying to play sports and stuff like that. And I was really really good at it. Um, but outside, you got 25 year old gang members throwing down on, on 10 year olds, picking up kids and dropping them on fire hydrants, beating the dog crap out of us. Um, it was, uh, uh never even to white people that lived in that area. Um, if you were white in that area, uh, people had this notion that they thought that you were a chicken and stuff like that. I was never a chicken. I took the beatings, I took the fights. Um, you know, I had no choice. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, uh, you know, hide inside and be abused all day. And then on top of it, you know, I want to go outside and play. And I ended up fighting, um, fighting everybody in the block so many times that uh, we all became friends. Still had problems with other people that, that didn't live on that street exactly. You know, you gotta walk to school. You know, new, school, new people come to school. People get different, you know, different things going on. So constantly, like, getting jumped. Um, I thought I, I thought I could fight pretty well. Um, this one week I got jumped by five people, and uh, I was the last man standing. So I thought I was, uh, you know, I thought it was okay. You know what I mean? Uh, the week passed after that. I get jumped by uh, five different other people. Uh, it didn't it didn't end up, <laughs> it did not end up well for me whatsoever. 
was able to stop two of them. Well, I dropped two of them is what happened. I dropped two of them and uh, I uh, tripped over a stop sign. They had a boot party on my face. They literally, you know, um, beat the holy crap out of me. Um, I've been uh, I've been stabbed. I've been hit with a baseball bat. I've been hit with um, a tennis ball racket. I've been hit with a metal pole, brass knuckles. Um, uh, I'm not sure if I've said it yet, but I've been stabbed before. I even got stabbed in my eye. Um, tons and tons of stitches on my face and top of my head, um, especially with the brass knuckles that the guy used on me. Um, you know, it was a different level of violence that I that, that, that back then I see, and I don't see it like nowadays. The level of violence is normally, you know, with the Fourth of July and stuff like that. Back then, it was more. Um, the level of violence was people getting their vertebrae broken, um, people needing reconstruction surgery on their face. Um, the amount of stitches I've gotten, you know, and it does go both ways. I don't want to say that this all happened to me and I'm innocent. No, um, the stuff that, uh, that I did on my end is, um, you know, it wasn't just a little black eye and a, and a busted lip that was going to stop somebody from hurting me. I took it, I took it as far as I, uh, I knew that they would take it. So, you know, I were still told boots and I kicked you in the face and you, and I broke your cheek, cheekbone and you had to get a surgery on your face. That's what happened. And, um, this, this all comes to the trauma part of the, this being a traumatic childhood was um, if I was if I would have been born in an area where where, um, you know, somebody just pushed you or somebody, you know, punched in your arm. OK, then 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 at that time, at that point, it'd be like the fights were uh, not um, not to a very high level of violence. You know what I mean? Um, where, where, where I grew up in the kind of uh, the kind of violence that went on was literally like. When somebody's knocked out, you still didn't stop, you know, and I've been hospitalized ton tons of times. There's been a lot of times where I should have been hospitalized and I, and I wasn't. Um, uh, I remember getting beat so bad that I was black and blue from like the neck all the way down my back. And that was by um, my mom's husband. <clears throat> and then um, I was in school and the teacher touched my shoulder or touched my back and I flinched because it was like, ah, you know. She called me over to the desk and asked me to lift my shirt up, and I did. And she said, "What happened?" And I didn't say anything. And she's like, "Somebody like you, you know, you deserved it." I didn't say nothing, you know. I was more than just the the physical abuse that went on. It was a lot of um uh, the mental abuse as well, you know. I loved my brothers and I loved my sister very, very much, especially when I was a kid, you know. We're we're all grown adults now, and we've all gone our our separate ways, so we really don't even talk and stuff like that, which life happens and you know it's unfortunate but that's what happens but um when we were kids i mean i you know i i, I was very very loyal i would try to protect them um you know i love them you know like i i couldn't eat the last um you know frozen burrito knowing that 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 everybody was hungry in there well, i i would go hungry too like i couldn't eat around them if they didn't have anything and I don't, I don't quite think it was like that with them towards me, but that's just the kind of person I am. <sighs> Nonetheless, um, I was told, you know, like you tell anybody, um, you know, they're gonna put you in foster care. They're gonna, uh, you know, they're gonna take you away from your brothers and sisters. Um, a whole lot of stuff, you know. Even if you tell that nothing will happen, and then I'm gonna get you even worse. Just uh, a lot of mental abuse like that. He was, uh, you know, he was like that with my mom. My mom was just very naive. Uh, now that we're, you know, I remember getting older and, uh, you know, talking to her about, about a lot of the stuff that happened. She she claimed that she just thought it was happening to her and that she just thought it was screaming and mental abuse um, that went on there, but that's not true. I, I believe that she knew and she's just being naive. Uh, but, you know, that is, uh, that is what it is. Um, you know, I would have never done that. I mean, there's, you don't do something to a child, you don't do something to a dog, you don't do something to an animal, you know, you don't, you know, uh, there's lots that you don't do, but I don't understand how, how or what would make somebody like that. And the only thing that I've been told is that he fought in Vietnam and he was a different person uh, before Vietnam and then uh, he came back from Vietnam and then I guess I was born uh, a little bit after that. Um, well, I actually don't know what, what, what year he came back from Vietnam, but I know that I was born after he came. Uh, you know, he was done uh, serving and uh, that he was on the front line and that he saw a lot of combat. That's all I know. But there's a lot of people that seen combat that don't come back <laughs> and do this kind of horrendous stuff, you know.
Um, I was uh, I was tied up for a year, strapped to my bed, and uh, I was only allowed to get up uh, to use the bathroom once and to have one sandwich and, and water that day. What happened with that is, um, I have to back up a little bit. In second grade, I broke my right arm at school and I didn't cry or make any noise. I knew it was broken though. When I broke my right arm, I went to the nurse's office and I told them. They said, put your arms out in front of you. She said, it doesn't look broken. And it was no longer recess at the time. I told me to go back to the class. <clears throat> I go into the class and the teacher says, uh, you know, why are you late? And blah, blah, blah. I said, I was at the nurse's office. I broke my right arm. She told me to have a seat. She said, everybody go on your desk and pull out your math book or whatever they said. So we all had to go on our little desk. And I couldn't grab anything. I had no strength in my right hand. I couldn't even grab anything. It was broken and it, and, it, and it hurt really bad. It just, I didn't cry. Like, you know, it's, I probably at that point probably got hurt a lot worse than, than me breaking my right arm at the time. But, uh, you know, it was a tough kid. So I asked the kid next to me, I said, uh, can you get my book? I can't grab it. My, my arm is broken. And then the teacher was like, what are you doing talking and blah, blah, blah. And I said, my arm is broken. And I think I called her a bitch. <clears throat> and then um, she's like, come over here. And she's like, put your arms out in front of you. And I did. And she grabbed my right arm, the arm that was broken, and she pulled it. And when she pulled it, I jumped up and I hit her uh, and I knocked her out. And when I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I say, you know, knocked her out. It wasn't like I hit her and she stumbled. No, she was out. And I was in second grade, and I should never hit a woman, but I'm just telling you what happened. This is it's second grade, so I pulled my right arm, and I just, out of, out of reflex, I just jumped up, and I, and I threw a Hail Mary, I guess, and, and nailed her. I dropped her, and then I, uh, I ran out of the classroom. And I was running out of the classroom. The teacher's aide tried to stop me, and I uh, did the football maneuver, you know, you know <laughs> and I got past her. Um, I went to the hospital that day. My right arm was broken. It was called a... Um, uh, I think the name. It was literally broken down like this. Uh, I can't remember the name of the break, but it was it, it, it was a very 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 bad break. Um, I get it cast up. When I'm in the hospital, the, um, the people have noticed that um, that I have you know all sorts of injuries on me. They, um, without me knowing at the time, they went ahead to contact like the child services people and stuff like that. But. Um, uh, I'm gonna get to some of the points, just bear with me. So anyways, um, I, I have a cast and, I'm, and I, I didn't get in trouble for, uh, for hitting the teacher because she pulled my arm. It happened on school, I reported it and they didn't do, do anything about it. So they were afraid that we were gonna sue them. I go back to school and when I go back to school, um, you know, they're standoffish for me because they're afraid that we might sue them sometime. I don't know what the statute of limitation is. I just, uh, you know, it is what it is. So anyways, um, I, I'm at school, but uh, I, I've always hated that. I, um, the teacher before that in the first grade is the teacher that touched my shoulder, and I showed her, and she said, you deserved it. The kid next to me swallowed a quarter. He, uh, he put a, literally a quarter in his mouth and swallowed, and it got stuck halfway in his throat. And he told the teacher that, and uh, she's like, you wouldn't swallow a quarter. And he's like, no, it's still in my throat. Please help. He went up going to the hospital um, that day and having it removed. These teachers, um, you know, weren't looking out for the for, for, for kids. They were, and I would, would think a fe you know, like if you were a guy teacher, maybe you didn't have that much compassion or something. But like, I, I would think a female uh, teacher would, but no. So I thought everybody was always in on it. Like they just hate us and they beat on us and they don't do nothing to help, you know. So um, I went ahead and I um, uh, so the second grade and I I held a I held, I held a big grudge. And the big grudge was towards that school. Um, you know, they uh, making fun of me for, for being so poor. My shoes were talk talking, you know, saying crap when I only uh, when I didn't have any socks on because um, we didn't have any clean or we I didn't have any. You know, my clothes that were way too big. I was a very very skinny small kid. You know, uh, making fun of me, uh, provoking stuff. Um, you know, there was a lot of other incidences where. Uh, you know, a kid give me his best shots, run up to me and basically sucker punches me and stuff like that. But he gives me everything he got. And uh, when he does that, it didn't drop me. And I'm chasing the kid 
and everybody who's in my way is getting knocked over and them come running and hiding behind the teacher and the teacher get it too if her, you know if somebody stole off on me and start swinging on me and then uh they see that uh that i'm still going forward you didn't you didn't have enough in your tank to get me down i'm coming after you and the teacher is breaking it up before i even get my due like, like i'm not just going to sit here and let you do that you know i uh, that happens at my house constantly <laughs> you're not, but you're my age, you're my grade, or you're, you know, uh, you know, you could be uh, a couple grades higher, you know, it's elementary school, so it literally could be, you know, a uh, fifth grader versus a second grader, it didn't matter, but um, the teacher would do it too, I, I, I'd hit on him, like, if you're breaking up this fight, and I'm just trying to get this person, I don't care who I connect with, I'm so, uh, I'm so angry and so upset, and uh, I'm coming after uh, the kid, you know, and that, that kind of stuff would happen, and um they would, uh, you know, they were always afraid that one day we would sue because of what happened in my arm. Um, so um, one day um, I'm going through um, like some like kind of garage stuff and I find a bunch of door doorknobs and I start learning how to pick them and how to bust them open and stuff. I came up with an idea to break into the school. And uh, I told a couple of my friends, I said, let's go over there and we can do this to the, the handles. And I showed them, showed them what, you know, what I had figured out. And I ended up not being able to go that day, but those kids did. And those kids broke into the school and my name got brought up into it. And I, uh, I didn't go to school for one year. And um, there was all this stuff, I, you know, was I gonna be charged for uh, vandalism and uh, burglary? You know, um, there was, I didn't know what was going on. I was just a scared kid. You know, I just thought, you know, things were gonna be bad. And um, I was tied up for a year, um, it, not a whole year, it was close to a year tied up every single day and that's when I got tortured the most and beat the most, you know, nobody at home, just me and him, just whoop on me for nothing, tied up, I can't even do anything. That went on for for quite some time and um, everybody I'm related to is older than me and uh, much bigger and I'd never understood why they didn't stop him. They must have still been terrified or what, what he did to them when they were, um, when they were younger, um, you know, Put like a like a thing in their head where they're 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 they're, they're terrified of them. I'm I'm terrified of them, and I remember thinking, man, will this ever stop? This this this, this, this life ever get better? Man, you know, I remember praying to God, you know, please somebody stop this, please somebody make this better, and then I would I would even like you know like hey, you know I can't get them, but can you know let me talk to my my, my brothers and sisters like hey, what if all of us attack him and you, we can make him stop? And none of them would do it. They wouldn't even. They wouldn't even entertain the idea. So, and you know, I, I guess I hold a little bit of judgment, or not judgment, but I, I hold some, um, you know, I hold something inside and wishing that that, you know, I'm the youngest of my family. I wish somebody that was older could have done something. My grandmother would pop over, but she would never ask questions like that. Uh, my mom would get beat, um, and he would tell my mom to tell my grandmother not to show up and not come over unannounced. You know, we'd all be threatened what would happen, you know, if we, if we opened up our mouths, that nothing would happen and that he'd, uh, you know, take care of my mom and they'd, you know, do, do, do horrible stuff, you know. So, um, uh, basically, um, you know, uh, I was out of uh, school for that whole time and then um, I go to a hearing and when I go to the hearing, um, there was a cop there at the hearing and I thought I was going to go to go to juvie. I didn't even do anything. I just taught them how to how to do it. And however, my name got brought up, and they they suspected me being in there. And uh, how my name got thrown there is is uh, somebody snitched and and told. And I uh, I kept my water and I said I don't know what the hell you're talking about. And they just kept saying, Well, we're gonna charge you with it. And I keep my mouth shut, man. I <laughs> I knew to do that. The hearing there was basically them trying to like get a kind of a motive out of me. Like, why did you do this? Do you not like people there? And uh, I knew to keep my mouth shut. I was like, I didn't do anything. But um, I went ahead and was like, no, I don't like the teachers, you know. You know, in second grade, she pulled my uh, my arm and it was broken. And then um, the cop got up and uh, said something along the lines of like, you know, uh, like, like the cop got up and then uh, the principal was like, you know, um, well, well, you're going to be charged with this. So she's talking for the cop and the cop's right there. And then all of a sudden, man, <laughs> my aunt comes flying in there and my aunt um, was like, you had him out of school for over a year. He's not been suspended or uh, expelled, which is illegal. He uh, he's been out for a year, and like she knew all this, like like the law terminology, and she said all that stuff. And she's like, he is gonna go back to that school. She's like, like through all this stuff, man. <laughs> My aunt saved me. 
it was just great, you know, like, I didn't get saved on, on a lot of stuff that I wish I got saved on. But she saved me on that. And um, I had to uh, I had to sign a contract saying that if I got into any more fights, if there was anything going on, <clears throat> I would be kicked out. That they weren't pressing charges at the time, but they could press charges at a later time if they were so so inclined. And I, I don't know the validity on that stuff. I'm just telling you what, what I was told. And when you were a kid like that, you know, <clears throat> I, uh, I believed them, you know, like when I was told mental abuse stuff, I, I, I believed it, you know, and this is like the, tra the most traumatic stuff, you know, like now, you know, I've been an adult for a long time, but thinking back on that, it's just like, I didn't have any help at the house. My mom didn't have any help. My brothers and my sister didn't have any help, you know. They, now they say go talk to a teacher if you have an issue and you should probably do it you know like you know if something's happened to you you should definitely tell somebody you know you see something say something when it comes to that especially for a kid you know uh, or if you're an adult you know more than just say something you know intervene like if I saw something bad happening to a kid I I, I would do everything I could to, 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 to and I wouldn't even have to know the kid because you know what I know what it feels like to be that kid and uh, and pray and wish that somebody would come and stop everything that, that fucking was happening, you know. <sighs> so um, um, I had a uh, I signed all those contracts, and then the teachers would provoke me even more, saying it's okay to to make fun of me. He can't do nothing. So now in this bad area that I live in, everything's still going on inside the house constantly. Um, I'm fighting before and after school and then during school is where I'm getting uh, I'm getting teased and I'm getting bullied and by even kids that should know better like they should have known better like you know before all this happened um, you know when you tried to try to mess with me you saw what happened when I when I beat the brakes off of you now you know that I can't do anything and now you're poking at me so um I guess I was pretty clever as a kid um, when that stuff would happen I would just sit there and have to take it I was really afraid of, um, you know, being taken away from, uh, from my brothers and my sister and my mom. Of course, I love my mom. I was very, very, very afraid of that. Like, sometimes things could be so worse, but what you don't know, it could be even a lot worse. And I didn't know what would happen. I didn't know if they would be okay, you know. Um, so being clever, I'm like, okay, I'll let them run their mouths and I'll get them after school. And uh, that's what would happen. And then they, there was like, uh, I found out that as long as it's an hour after school, it was fine. So I would knock on people's doors. They didn't expect for me to come over and play, knock out their door. Their mom would answer. And I'd be like, you know, whatever the kid's name is. And he'd come to the door still standing by his mom. And I'd just start swinging on him. Like, oh, you thought that was cool, you know? And I'm, and I'm not saying that what I did was uh, was adult-like. I'm just telling you what I what I grew up in and what I felt in, in my experiences and my story. So you, you were doing that the whole time to me. I gotta get I gotta get you back uh, for for doing it. Nowadays, um, you know that doesn't sound like the very smart thing to do, but that's what I did. Um, we ended up uh, moving uh, when I was twelve, and we just moved to the next city over. And it wasn't uh, wasn't nearly as bad as where we lived. Uh, it was a little bit bad, but not not nothing compared. I mean, it it got worse as time went on. But we moved there. I'm twelve years old now, and. Um, my mom, with all the abuse that was going on with her, she she was the only one who worked, and um, uh, her car broke down, and she and back then there was pay phones, there was no like there was her cell phones been around since the eighties, but nobody ever had them, at least that, that that we knew. She uses a pay phone and nobody picks up. She can't get a she can't get a ride. She don't know what she don't know what's going on with her car. She ends up trying to walk like 30, 40 miles back home, and ends up. Um, uh, some uh, pedestrian calls um, calls an ambulance. She like collapses at some point. She's in the hospital for over a week, and they're trying to find out what's going on. She's unable to walk. Um, you know, they were talking about multiple sclerosis. That ended up being what it was. They started uh, thinking that it was multiple sclerosis. She was unable to she was unable to walk whatsoever, um, and uh, like couldn't get up. And her hands couldn't like she couldn't even feed herself. She was in really really rough shape. I um, I just didn't see her for that week. I don't think I was asked to go to the hospital. I had no way. I don't even know what hospital it was. Even to this day, being grown man, I don't know what hospital she was put in and stuff like that. So she was in there for a week. I know that um, the night before she came back, um, 
I, I can't tell you the details. I don't remember, but it was something like I was told that uh, she'll be uh, she'll be home tomorrow morning. So I uh, I'm 12 years old at this point. I wake up and uh, the first thing I do is I, uh, I I run to see where my mom is because she's supposed to be there. And I woke up in the afternoon. <clears throat> I um I cross balance with my mom's husband, and he's uh he's uh in the kitchen and he's like he blocks my way. And he tells me, you need to go back to your bedroom and, um, you know, just starts running his mouth at his power trip and his demeaning disrespectfulness towards me and how he's the boss of everybody and all that other jazz. And I'm like, I need to see mom. I haven't seen her all week. And he had his belt in his hand already and the metal part was hanging out. And he's like, he's like, you don't go in there. I'm going to crack you upside your face and, you know. And he's using all sorts of profanity. And I told him, I said, I swear to God, I wish you would hit me. And I mean, it wasn't like like I knew he I was going to do it because he'd been doing it my whole life. What had changed was um, I, I felt like this crazy spiritual strength. And I really like this burning desire of like, you know, like finding out what happened to my mom and if my mom is okay. And he just cracks me with it. Man, that metal belt buckle dude hits me like in a temple and I get the belt right in my face and he cracks me as hard as he can with it in front of everybody like no like nobody cares inside of the house he uh he did anything and everything out in public or if we ever had guests over like my grandmother stuff like that it was always very like smile to the face and and then when she'd like I would say my grandma was there when she walked in the room like you don't tell her you better not tell her nothing you know that kind of crap and, uh, man, that would really irritate me and, uh, frustrate the hell out of me. But he hits me, he hits me like that. And I, uh, I hit him back the first time I ever hit him. And I believe that, um, that I had the strength of God and that God was, was, was protecting me at that point. And, uh, you know, all those prayers I had that, uh, I just kept praying, you know, you know, please make it stop one day. I had, uh, like, it felt like I had the strength of like 20 grown men. And I hit him, and I've never seen anybody fly like that in my life. It looked like something out of a cartoon. I can't make any of this stuff up. I'm not like, I'm not, you know, I have imaginary, like, funny jokes that, uh, that I think of sometimes. But, like, I can't come up with a story like this. I hit him, and I hit him with everything I had, and then some. And then he flew. So, like, I've never seen anybody fly with their feet flying in the air or something out of a cartoon. And when he lands, it's a big old calamity. And he lands, and he lands hard. And he does that, and uh, my brother sees sees what happened. He saw he, he he was looking at us when he was telling me to get out of the kitchen, and I'm not going to see my mom, and I need to go back to my bedroom. Now he's going to crack me upside my head with this, and all that crap. He saw me. He just didn't expect. He did not expect something like that. And he sees me do it, and when he went flying and landed, it felt like the most incredible thing ever. It finally felt like um, you know. Like, the underdog is now here. There was no more of me ever being terrified of him. There were the nights where I was afraid of him opening my door just to beat the hell out of me. The nights there I was afraid, or the days I was afraid to, to go in my house because I knew what was going to happen that night. You know, I knew what was going to happen that day. You know, all the times of uh, the abuse, all that, like, it was, it was, it was like retribution. And it, and it felt good, man. After he hit me like that, and it cracked me, I, I hit him, and, and he flew. And uh, I just stood there and looked at him. He, he wasn't out all the way. Like, I mean, I don't know if I knocked him out. Uh, I just saw him fly. I know that he had to go get stitches that day. I mean, like literally after this, he went, he drove himself to the hospital. I split underneath his eye, um, like all the way right here. And then his actual eyebrow, I nailed him right in the eye and he flew. But he lands like that. And it was like a good 20, 30 seconds. I'm staring at him, just like, like looking at my masterpiece. Like, finally, I got him. I did this, and I was just on at it, and uh, he pulled out his big old buck knife, and then my brother told me, uh, he's like, run, 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 he's got his knife, <clears throat> and I started running a little bit, and I was like, nah, I, ran, I turned around, and I ran back towards him, and I didn't care that he had a knife on him, and I did it again, you know, just beat on him, now... Now we're going to see how it feels like for you to beg and scream. And that was one of the big things. He loved when he was beating on you for you to beg and scream for him to stop. And he would still do it. Now we're seeing the roles reversed. Oh, how the, the mighty have fallen. And the meek will inherit this earth. 
this is what's going on and I got you and it feels good and it feels damn good. It, it, I want, you know, the times of, you know, just pleasing me alone is over. This is now this, this is what you want. Now this is what you get. And, uh, I just laid into him and then, uh, my brother, uh, broke it up, it got me off of him. Now he was knocked out. Now he got a little bit of taste of what it feels like to be knocked out and be kicked in your throat and then have you, uh, you know, me take my thumb and jam it in your eye. Now you know what it feels like when you're on the ground and you get kicked in your stomach. Now you know what it feels like to be hit and tortured so much to your privates like it was done to me. Yeah, when it was out, I stomped on it. Stomped on it, man. Stomped on it. Kicked it. Wailed on it. Didn't care if he was knocked out. Don't care if he's not moving. He'll feel the pain later, and even doesn't. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to inflict some damage on him that, that you know, you don't walk away from because some of the, a lot of the damage that he did to me that was physical. I even to this day I have problems. Not even problems. It, it, my stuff don't work. It don't. It never has. It, it, I, who, who does that to somebody? And for what? I never. I, I wasn't some bad kid that stole the car and you know, you know, went crazy. It's just some people are evil and some people do some very evil things and that's the only way I could wrap it up. But I wailed on him like that and it felt really, really good. I decided to do that all day. I came out of my bedroom maybe three or four times that day and did the same thing to him. Even when he came back and he had, uh, he had the stitches, I, I, I popped those stitches back open then. You know, like whether they were staples or stitches, I don't, I don't quite remember. I just know I busted that eye back open, you know. And then um, I did that again the next day. Tacked him, um, you know. And, and it wasn't like I would, like, at this time, now he's not screaming how he's going to, uh, you know, how bad he's going to whoop on me. Now he's not telling me stories of what he's going to do to my siblings in retribution and retaliation. Now he's not saying any of that stuff. He's saying he's going to call the cops. He's telling me he's going to call the cops on me. <clears throat> he's screaming across the room to my mom, please get him off me. Please stop. Please stop. Now you want to? <laughs> no. Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> you get no mercy from me. And nobody was stopping. I mean, like, they, you know, my brothers got me off of them um, um, after I had my way for a little bit, you know, after, uh, after I, I done kicked you in the mouth a few times. Now that, now, now that I knocked some teeth out, and I'm not exaggerating, and I'm not talking like some big old guy, now that I finally got you, <laughs> oh, it felt great. So then um, I did the same thing on the second day, and then uh, later on that night, he, um, he takes a 200-pound bag of, uh, like, I'm told it was 200 pounds. It was really, really heavy. It was a bunch of tools. He takes it. He was arguing with my mom, and, like, we're all asleep, and he throws it at her head and barely misses and just caves in the drywall and the studs inside the house and we all hear a big old calamity and you know we all run in there what happened you know and i'm just a little kid and my dada does what happened and my mom's like it could have killed me if it hit me and i got him again and this time when i when i got him i let him know that if he was going to stay in that house that's what was going to happen to him and I, and let me tell you, I would have, I, I, I'd be in prison for the rest of my life, but I would have done that to him. And uh, he believed me, which is smart. He left. He didn't have any place to go on that day. He left. Um, and that's, <clears throat> so I, I got him out. The youngest, uh, you know, the, 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 the youngest in my family. I put that whooping on him. I made sure that he didn't mess with my mom anymore. He didn't mess with me anymore. He didn't mess with my brothers and my sister. He didn't walk around making everybody so scared to walk on eggshells. You know, we weren't allowed to ever have friends over, you know. And if we did, he'd smile in front of their face. And then when the friend left, he'd beat the crap out of you afterwards because of it. Um, he died of cancer when I was 18. And he knew that he was dying of cancer and he was in the hospital. He reached out to everybody um, and I wouldn't talk to him. I haven't seen him since the, the, the stuff that I told you about. And he made amends with my brother, my sister, my mom, and everybody like that. And they all went to his funeral and I didn't before he died. Um, he uh, was talking to my mom and talking to my brothers and my sister saying, tell him, tell him I just want him to forgive me. Tell him I, I need I need him to forgive me before I die, and I'm not going to give it to him. And I didn't judge them. They they forgave them, 
They went to his funeral. They talked to him. They went and visited him. They said uh, their goodbyes to him. I didn't need to say goodbye. And maybe I'm just, you know, cold-hearted for that or whatever, but that's exactly how I feel, you know. So, I mean, that's a lot of the, the traumatic stuff that I, that I grew up with and uh, that I had to deal with. Um, none of it has anything uh, that I know about having, you know, has anything to do with me being homeless now. I do have two other videos that explain why I'm homeless and what was going on. So I do hope if this is your first time watching my, uh, my video that you go check those videos out. I do uh, hope that if you enjoyed it and you could relate, you drop comments. And even if you don't know what to say in a comment, just putting a smiley face or just saying hi inside of a comment, that will help boost my stuff up and help the algorithm. Uh, I, I hope that you guys all subscribe. Um, uh, I haven't got any, uh, yeah, anything sent to me, but if somebody wants to send me something to my cash app, it's the same... My cash app's the same as my YouTube, Alien Ascend. I'll put it in the description. Um, not begging for money or anything like that. Just if you want to give me something, cool. If you don't, no problem. And um, I'll catch you on the next one.